Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. We're gonna be doing a get ready with me video today. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how I got this hair and some makeup. The hair that I'm wearing is from Asteria Hair. Shout out to them for sponsoring this video. They sent over this wig. It's 30 inches. 30 freaking inches and it's amazing. I love it so much. <laughs> this hair is so, so, so long. Like, it's long. It's long. This is definitely like vacation hair. I feel like if I were to go on vacation, this is like a wig that I would definitely be wearing because even though it's super long, it's really, really easy to style. Like this literally took no time at all to style. Um, and I just love the length. I feel like the length just gives it all types of like goddess vibes. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how I got this hair ends makeup look. I'm gonna be taking some makeup pictures later on. So let's go ahead and get started. Grab a snack, or grab a drink. I feel like this is gonna be a kind of longer but still a very chill video. I feel like we're always on some chill vibes over here. <laughs> but if you wanna see how I got this look, then just go ahead and keep on watching. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started getting into this look. I am doing my hair first like I always do. This wig is super, super, super long. It's 30 inches of fabulousness and I'm ready to get this thing installed. Like as soon as I saw this wig, I was just like, yes, yes. I was gonna do the bald cap method today, but let me see, let me just see. Cause I feel like sometimes I don't even need it and it's just like nice to, skip over that part so I'm gonna put this on real quick and just kind of see what we working with okay I think I'm gonna skip the bald cap method today I think I can do it so while my hot comb is heating up I'm just gonna give you guys like the rundown on why I was like away for so long um, so a little less than like a year ago my mom was diagnosed with liver cancer she had liver cirrhosis and then it just kind of escalated to liver cancer if you're familiar with like how the liver works in general or at all like you probably know that the liver basically cleans out your um any like toxic chemicals that your body kind of like produces one of those chemicals being ammonia my mom she her ammonia levels got really high and when that happens, you, if it's too high, you can basically go into a coma. The, I think like the day of Valentine's Day or like the day after Valentine's Day, her liver, her ammonia level got really high and um, she went to sleep one night and she just didn't wake up for like the entire day. Like she was just sleeping the entire day. Uh, we ended up having to take her to the hospital and they told us that her ammonia level was really high and um, they were just trying to like get her back to, you know, rebalance and everything like that. She's okay now, like she's, you know, fine and everything like that. She woke up and everything. They were able to kind of balance her out and everything. So she's okay now, but um, it was just a really scary, it's scary when it happens because it's not the first time that it's happened. The, the last time that her ammonia level got really high, she was in a coma for like two weeks. So she was like sleeping, um, just and just not waking up for like a good two weeks or so and um so when it happens it's very scary and um this was the first time that it happened while i'm here in miami so it was just kind of hard for me to to deal with and to kind of go through even after she you know got back home and everything like that for some reason i feel like after that i had a really hard time just kind of like getting back into like the normal swing of things i feel like the like emotion of it all and just like the fear of it all just kind of got like the better of me at that point and um so i just had like a really hard time um just kind of like getting back into like the swing of things it just didn't feel good to be on camera it didn't feel good to film it just didn't feel good to do anything this is like my third time filming this video actually like the first time i filmed it i think i um uh i called my mom like after i was like film after i was done filming because i literally stopped like midway because i was just like i can't i can't do this this just doesn't feel right at all and i remember calling my mom and just telling her like i'm trying to film and it's just I just can't. She's just like, you can't let it stop you. You have to keep going and stuff. So I tried again <laughs> and I ended up crying um, just like I did in the first try. And so here I am with the third try. I feel like I'm doing a lot better now. I found myself getting like super emotional and everything, but I feel like I'm doing a lot better now. But I'm just glad that she's doing, she's doing better now. I've seen her and everything and um, 
you know, she's doing a lot better now. So I'm really grateful for that. It was just really difficult in the moment because because of COVID-19, like you can't go into the hospital and visit anyone. So even if they don't have COVID-19, um, so uh, even while she was in the hospital, um, like I couldn't go and see her. Like I couldn't, you know, visit her or anything like that and make sure she was okay or talk, try to talk to her. So I kind of had to just sit at home and wait for someone to say like oh she's awake and everything so it can be very it can be very um it can be it's a lot <laughs> it's a it's a lot but yeah that's pretty much like what happened and like why i was kind of like away i'm just very very grateful that she's doing a lot better now she's been encouraging me to to get back into filming and stuff so i'm, I'm like this is my I'm trying to, to get back into it for her and everything. So even though it's kind of difficult to talk about, I know I definitely wanted to um, because I know for me, I have a really bad tendency of like holding things in. <laughs> like I don't really share a lot of like my, I feel like I look so silly with this wig like half on. I feel like I don't really share, um, I don't really share like what's going on with me a lot to a lot of people emotionally. I don't really tell anybody like when I'm going through stuff, like I just, I really just hold it in. Like, I don't know why, but I've always been that way. Um, even when I was a little kid, like I, you know, when something was wrong with me, I'd always just say, I'm okay, like I'm fine. Um, and um, that's not really like a good thing to do, especially when you're going through, you know, hard times. It's good to talk to somebody. I know for me, like I, recently got into therapy and that's really helped a lot. And I also wanted to talk about it too, just to um, let you guys know that's, or anybody that's kind of going through something similar that you're not alone. For me, sometimes the idea of being alone or the belief that I'm alone feels a lot worse than what I'm actually going through. So I definitely wanted to let anybody know that might be going through something similar that you're definitely not alone. Um, I know sometimes it can feel that way, but you're not, you're definitely not. And um, I'm praying for you, I'm sending you positive vibes. So um, yeah, that's pretty much what's been going on for the last like month or so. Um, I'm sorry, it's kind of like, you know, I, and I feel like that's the reason why I don't really talk about anything is because I feel like I, when I do say something or you know talk about things that aren't like, you know, happy or positive or whatever, you know, I feel like I'm bringing people down. And I think that's a huge reason why I don't really talk about stuff is because I don't want to be that person to like bring other people down. Um, but I've realized, you know, over like, you know, just getting older and growing up that, you know, anybody that truly cares about you and you know loves you and wants to, the best for you is going to be there for you when you know you're going through hard times and isn't going to feel you know like you're bringing them down when you do tell them you know stuff that's going on with you that might not be like the most positive thing in the world i think that's why it's important to always keep people around you that are um that truly love you and that you know want the best for you and i really hope it just like a reminder you know that you're not alone if you're going through something similar and um, to take the coronavirus seriously, guys, like continue to wear your mask. I know like for Florida, like there's a couple of other states, like the mask mandate is gonna be lifted soon if it's not already. Like we're still in the middle of a panorama, okay? <laughs> like we're still in the middle of a freaking Pandora's box. And um, it's important to wear masks, not just for you. If you're not gonna do it for yourself then just do it for people like my mom that, you know, are, at a higher risk if they do, you know, catch the virus. So I think this is a great time to practice empathy and compassion and, you know, understanding and just trying to, you know, think of other people and not just think about yourself. But yeah, so I think my hot comb is all, uh, I hope it's heated up now. That was kind of a while, but so I'm just going to start um, flattening these edges because they're kind of fluffy. I think I'm just going to go in with like my hairspray and secure this lace. I don't think I'm going to do the bald cat method. I feel like it'll look fine. It'll look fine. It'll look fine. I'm so excited to style this wig. I feel like it's going to look freaking amazing. I am so, so excited. <laughs> like this wig is so gorgeous. I love like this curl pattern. It's like a wavy type of texture, which I feel like is perfect for this length. I feel like if it was any curlier than this, 
I think it would be a little bit more difficult for me to manage. But since it has like just like this really beautiful like natural wave to it, I think it's going to be like it's going to be perfect. <laughs> so I just finished flattening those edges there. So I'm just going to go ahead and start securing this lace down. Um, oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, this is going to look so good. Okay, so to secure this lace, I'm sorry, I'm just really excited about this lace. I just like... <laughs> I'm going to be using the Olive Oil Fix It Super Hold Spray to secure this lace down. So I'm actually going to start off like right over here, like on the side here. And just go in with my hairspray and just start from there. Okay, I love the way that this is going so far. This lace is melting in like a dream. I need to cut this lace out of my eye though. There's a lot of lace here. Let me just cut this. I just need this out of the way. Just like, oof. Before I cut like this part off, I'm gonna go in with, maybe I don't need to actually, cause I'm gonna have some like edges here by date. So maybe I don't need to. No, I feel like it's gonna be too far down. Okay, yeah, we're, we're plucking. We're plucking just a little bit, just a little bit. I'm gonna grab some tweezers and we're just gonna like pluck right in here. I need the hairline to be like further back because that's just a little too too much on my forehead. always forget to do this like I have a, I always like forget to adjust the straps and cut off the lace in the back before I apply it I don't know what it is I'm gonna use a little razor thingy here to cut this off I'm gonna cut little tabs in the lace first just so it's like a lot easier for me to figure out you know get super close to that hairline while I was away I definitely caught up on some of the shows that I was watching like on Netflix and HBO. So one of the shows that I got into was Behind Her Eyes, I think it is. It's on Netflix. Man, that show is lit. <laughs> The show is hella lit. Um, it's only got one season. I think it's like a newer show on Netflix, but I love it. It was, it's one of those shows that will literally have you screaming at the TV screen the entire time. It was definitely like really fun watching it, but <laughs> I, li I can't, I kid you not guys. I was literally just like screaming at my TV screen, just like in pure in frustration in shock and like just shook i was it, i was just all over the place while watching the show the show is definitely under like suspense um it's not like scary or anything like that because i don't do i don't do scary movies or scary shows like i just cannot i, I don't like being scared like i just don't i <laughs> i'm just like where is the love give me the love like i don't want to be scared like i want to you know feel the love i want to feel the action like no i can't i can't do like horror movies, scary movies, like that's just not, that's not my really my thing. Um, I'm definitely more of like a rom-com type of person. <laughs> like I love like romantic comedies. Yeah, I'm, I'm not into, uh, into scary stuff. So it's not scary, but there definitely is like a lot of suspense. Let me see if I could find like a synopsis or like a, a summary of the show. Um, just to kind of give you an idea of like, um, like what you're getting into with it. But it's really, really good. So on Google, it says, a single mother enters a world of twisted mind games when she begins an affair with her psychiatrist boss while secretly befriending his mysterious wife. Mysterious indeed, sis. Like, <laughs> that wife is just, mm, that wife is, oh my gosh. But it's really, really good. I highly recommend it. Um, it's called Behind Her Eyes. Um, so that's like the newest one that I, I was watching. So I s finished watching Titans. That was another show that had me freaking screaming at the television screen, but not for good reason. Behind Her Eyes was for good reason. With Titans, it was just out of literal pure frustration and anger, just like at how 
annoying like that that show was um like written uh, especially like the last episode of season two like the finale was just like <sighs> it goes with like the whole issue that i have with like dc movies in general like i feel like the writers of like the dc comic shows or and, and movies like i feel like they just rush I don't know what it is, but they just always feels like they're rushing to get to like a certain point in like the plot. I think it's the one thing that Marvel truly has the upper hand on when it comes to like their movies. Marvel has truly taken the time to allow the viewer to bond with a lot of the characters within like the Avengers like team. You know, you have the whole Spider-Man world, you have um they had like this whole entire series with captain america you had then iron man with thor like you they really gave us like a moment to bond with each of these characters and they took their time building up to like the avengers team like they didn't just like you know say okay here's captain america here's thor here's spider-man oh okay band together and you know fight crime and yada 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 aliens blase blase save the world and bam like it wasn't like that like this literally took years of you know just progressively building up to that point of you know getting to the avengers and i think that's the reason why the avengers franchise does so much better like it's just so frustrating because i feel like with dc comics like they have some of the most amazing amazing characters like some of the most amazing storylines when you read the comics but because like the writers of like the movies and tv shows they i feel like they're they see the avengers and they're trying so hard to it just feels like they're trying so hard to kind of like get to that point they don't realize that it took years of you know gradual you know uh like it took like a journey to get up to that point. The Marvel team didn't just say like, you know, here are the Avengers and you know, do what you want with it. Like they really gave everybody an opportunity to bond with each of like the members of the team. And um, when we finally did get the event, the first Avengers movie, I think that's the reason why it was so like exciting because you saw Thor, you saw Thor's journey, you saw Spider-Man's journey, you saw, Iron Man's journey, Captain America's journey, like you saw all of these characters prior to that film, that first Avengers film, and you just knew it was gonna be lit because you just, you saw all of these characters like, you know, prior, like all of their movies beforehand. It's just really frustrating, man. It's just really, really frustrating when it comes to like DC because I feel like there's so much potential there. There's so, so, so much potential. But yeah, so Titans is one of the, one of the shows that I have been watching or I finished watching. And um, I also started watching Watchmen. Watchmen is also a DC Comics like show um, on HBO. And Regina King is the main character for Watchmen and he is kicking ass. <laughs> I love Regina King. I feel like she's like an amazing actress. Um, not only just like a, a an actress, but like a voice actress too. Like her... <sighs> Her time on the boondocks is literally like the most iconic thing ever. The talent, the talent is crazy. If you're into like DC comics or like superhero show shows, I definitely recommend Watchmen. Like just watching this black woman kick all this white supremacist ass is the best experience ever in the history of TV. Like I just love it so much. I highly recommend Watchmen. That's a really good show. Those three shows were the ones that kind of like spoke to me the most like during like that my little hiatus and everything so i'm going to i'm literally almost done with this hair like i'm just trying to like figure out like if i want to do a side part or a middle part or what um but i'm literally almost done with it so i'm just going to start doing my edges here i've been going with more of like a softer edge these days i don't know what it is but it just looks like so cute to me like the softer edge so I've just been kind of going with that. And to style them, to kind of like um, swoop them and everything, I'm using this gel. This is the Extreme Styling Gel. I got this from Target. It's like, well, did I get this from Target? No, I got this from the beauty supply store, but you can definitely buy it at Target. This is like one of the most effective, inexpensive gels I've ever used. Like I use this for a lot of stuff. Like I use this for my wash and goes, when I'm doing my, when I'm working with my natural hair, when I have my afro out. I'll use like that gel to do like my wash and goes um 
I'll use it to like style my edges. It's just like a really good like universal gel to like just have like in your cabinet, like in your stash, you know, whenever you just need like a light bait gel for something. I'm only using a small amount of this because um, I have this hairspray on, so I don't want to put too much and have like the hairspray that I use to secure my lace like lift and stuff. Like the more product that you use, like the more, um, you know, easier it's going to be for like that. Whoa, my gosh. Like, when you use too much, like the product kind of seeps through the lace and it starts to loosen the like hairspray that you use to secure it down. So um, the less product that you use, the better. Um, the goal is to basically like style the hair and um, that's it. Like you don't want like your product to like go into the lace and like move anything around. I have a feeling I'm going to switch over to a side part. I don't know. I just, I feel like with side parts, I just, they just look more flattering on me. I don't know why, but I feel like a middle part just doesn't really suit me very much. I definitely feel like side parts are kind of more of like my vibe. Right, guys so I finished doing my edges and I went to the bathroom and added some water to this hair just to kind of get the curls going I used to have like a spray bottle with like water for when I'm wearing curly hair but I don't know where it is so I had to go to the sink and just like add some water so I'm gonna go ahead and do a side part I decided I'm gonna do a side part um, I tried looking at a middle part when I was in the bathroom and I was just like mm -mm, a side part it's just got to be a side part I love this hair I think it's so so pretty I feel like this hair would be perfect like on a vacation or something like if you're going on vacation and you just want something um you know kind of effortless but still very like I'm a goddess like this hair is perfect for that so I'm gonna add my styling products now this is the olive oil hold and shine wrap set mousse from ORS I just picked this up from Target yesterday and um, this is gonna be my first time trying this oh my gosh it smells like their um ah oh, that shine spray like that olive oil shine spray Oh, I used to love that hairspray too. Like I used to use that hairspray all the time when I was like in high school. I have no idea why I did, but that hairspray smelled so good. <laughs> now, but for real though, that shine spray had your hair looking like silk. Like it really did. That and like the pink spray. Like I remember feeling like, oh, my hair is like silky. Yes. I have a little satin um, wrap that Asteria Hair sent me as well with the wig. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply um, put that on just to keep these edges protected. This package was actually really, really nice. So let me show you guys real quick. So they sent over this little satin bag and the hair came in like a plastic bag, but they sent over like a separate satin one, which I really like. I love to like keep my hair in like these little satin bags over like the plastic ones because I actually need to start investing in like, you know, mannequin heads to like display my wigs. So for the time being, I keep them in like satin bags like this just to keep them protected when I'm not wearing them. So they sent over this bag as well as some wig caps and look how cute these scarves are. I was like, oh my gosh, these are so cute. Um, so they sent over like this scarf right here. I thought this was super cute. Like perfect when you need to like wrap your hair up and everything and then they sent over a floral one which i thought was super cute too so we're going to pull this hair back out of the way i'm just going to use a little scrunchie real quick this is like the skinnier one here i'm going to fold that in half and just put that over my edges but yeah, so that's pretty much it for the hair. Don't forget that all of the information for this hair, like always, is gonna be down below in the description box. So if you have any questions about like the length that I'm wearing, like all those little fine details, make sure to check the description box. I'm also gonna leave a link to this exact wig in the description box, in the, in the description box as well. 
So any questions, just make sure to check there or you guys can ask me down below in the comments. We're just gonna go ahead and pause here with the hair and move on to the makeup. So I hope you guys don't mind that I do a voiceover for this part. I had some music playing right before I started filming my makeup and it was just vibes. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna do a voiceover. I just kind of like vibe out during this little makeup session that we got here. So I started off using some moisturizer. I used the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream and then I'm gonna go in with my primer. To prime, I'm using the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer and then I also sprayed their um, Grip and Set Setting Spray on top for a little bit of extra hold. Then for my under eye cream, I'm using a new product from Ula Henriksen. This is their Wrinkle Blur Eye Gel Cream. I literally got this product in the mail as I was filming this video. So I was like, you know what? Let's just go ahead and throw in this, in this tutorial. I like to use an eye cream underneath my concealer anyway. I feel like it just makes like the under eyes look that much more like flawless. So I use that to prep and then I'm gonna move into foundation. I love this foundation so much. Like the name literally speaks for itself. It's not too matte to the point where it's uncomfortable. It's like that perfect balance. I definitely have combination skin. I'm a little bit oilier on my T-zone. My cheeks are kind of normal and then around my mouth I'm more dry. It holds up really well on my oilier areas and it still feels super comfortable on the parts of my face that are a little bit more on the dry side. So once my foundation is all blended in, I'm gonna go in with just a little bit of concealer. I'm using the Rare Beauty Concealer in shade 410 Neutral. I'm only gonna add this on my cheek area though. I have a couple of acne scars there that need a little bit more extra coverage so I'm just gonna focus that concealer there. Then to highlight, I'm gonna use the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. This one is in shade Sucre d'Orge. I'm gonna apply this underneath the eyes, along the sides of the nose to start snatching up that nose, a little bit on the sides of the mouth, the chin, and the cupid's bow. I'm gonna switch between two brushes to blend everything out. I think this is the Real Techniques Accent Brush. And then I'm also gonna use the brush that I use to apply my foundation, just to really make sure it's a blending in to the foundation and there's no like harsh lines anywhere. So now that my concealer is on, I'm gonna go in with my cream contour. I'm using a brandy new product from Danessa Myricks. I am so obsessed with this product. This is her contouring balm, and I'm using the shade Deep One. It's just, uh, it's just perfection. And congratulations to Danessa Myricks. She just got her line launched into Sephora, which is amazing. She's just such an amazing artist. I've never met her before, but she seems like the sweetest person ever. This is one of her newer products that she just recently launched. Launched. I'm not gonna lie to you, I was a little bit nervous to use it because usually with bombs, I'm always scared about how they perform with powders, but this product literally blends into the skin like a dream and it works perfectly with powders as well. So I'm sold. Definitely check it out if you're looking for a new cream contouring product to use. And now I'm going in with just a little bit more concealer. This is the Revolution Pro Ultimate Coverage Concealer in shade tan, but I'm only using a really small amount because this concealer is she thick. She thick, thick. <laughs> She's really full coverage and the consistency is definitely on the thicker side. So a little bit of this goes a really long way. I just wanted that extra bit of brightness on the inner portion of the under eye. And then to set all of that, I'm using the Beauty Bakery Flower Powder. This is one of my all time favorite setting powders. I love using the shade Cassava. So I'm going in with the brush and just setting all of the areas that I applied concealer. And then to set the rest of the face, including my cream contour, I'm using the Laura Mercier setting powder in medium deep. I'm then gonna add my powder bronzer. This is the Fenty Beauty Sun Stalker Bronzer in Coco Naughty. I'm only gonna use a small amount of this because I feel like that Danessa Myrick's cream contour was just like, she was still popping even after like setting with powder and everything. So I'm only gonna use a little bit of the Fenty bronzer just to give the skin a little bit of extra warmth. 
And then for my blush, I'm using my favorite blush palette right now. This is the BH Cosmetics Bellini Blush Palette. It just comes with a variety of these super cute peachy tones. If you're into peach blushes, I highly recommend. I don't really use a particular shade from this palette. All of the shades are kind of more similar. So I just like to mix like two or three of them and create like my own custom shade of peach. Then to touch up the under eyes and continue snatching the nose, I'm gonna use the Fenty Beauty Soft Matte Powder Foundation in shade 255. This is kind of like a newer thing that I've been doing. So I bring this powder that I'm using, the Fenty powder, like really, really close to the sides of the nose. And then I add a small amount of it to the bridge of the nose. So it kind of looks like I contoured my nose, but I actually didn't. I just highlighted. <laughs> so it's basically like a reverse contour. But yeah, loving these soft matte powders from Fenty. They are amazing. And so now I'm applying my nose highlighter. You guys know I'm not really like into like highlighting all over the face anymore. I pretty much just highlight my nose. So I'm using the Beauty Bakery Milk and Honey palette. I think the shade is Sweet Pea or Sweet Bee. It might be, it's one of those two, but it's like the orangey tones highlighter in the palette. And I'm gonna apply this onto the bridge of the nose, the tip and the sides of the nose. But I think that's it for my face routine. I think all I have left to do is add my little beauty marks, but I think I do that later on. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to brows now. I'm using the NYX Cosmetics Micro Brow Pencil in shade Brunette and Espresso. I'm using Espresso on the outer portion of the brow and then Brunette is gonna go on the inner portion since it's a little bit lighter than espresso. Then to set the hairs in place, I'm using the Maybelline Brow Fast Sculpt Gel Mascara. This one is in shade Auburn. I'm definitely going for more of a sculpted look for my brow today. So, so once I have them filled in and set, I'm gonna use a really, 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 really small amount of concealer to do a little bit of extra cleaning up on the bottom portion. So now I'm gonna add my little beauty marks. I actually have like real beauty marks in the spots that I add them. A couple of them are like acne scars that I just tried to like, you know, disguise and everything. But for the most part, a majority of these are actually like beauty marks that I actually have. So I like to redefine them and everything. So the skin is done. Let's go ahead and move on to the eyes. I'm gonna prime as usual using my Be Perfect, Perfect Prime eyeshadow base. We're gonna apply this on the lid space to prep for our eyeshadows. And then we're gonna go in with our first shadow. This is from the Ace Boutte Blossom Passion Palette. We're using the shade Seduction and I'm gonna create like a winged shape for my eye look today. So that's kind of like the shape that I'm gonna be applying this first shadow. I always like to kind of use my darkest shade as kind of like a map to how I want my eyeshadow look to come out in the end. With this look, I really wanted the shadow to be winged out. So I'm creating a V on the outer corner. Then to blend that out, I'm gonna go in with the shade Love. And this is a really cute like hot pink shadow. I'm gonna apply this on the edges using a Morphe M506 and as I'm applying I'm really pulling this color out towards the like hairline. I'm then gonna go in with the Artistry Vault palette by Playing in Makeup by Yolando and Beauty by Melissa. I feel like you guys have seen this palette a million times, but that's because it's definitely a favorite of mine. It's such a good palette. I'm gonna use a mixture of two shades. One is more of like a yellowy tone and the other is more orange. And I'm using those two colors to blend out the edges of our hot pink. So I'm going in with another separate Morphe M506 and same as my previous color, I'm using that to blend the edges and also continuing to pull the color out on the outer corner. I'm then gonna apply my inner corner highlight. I don't know why, but I've been really, really, really loving matte, like beige tones on the inner corner. I feel like it just makes the eyes look super awake and like open and just like very doll-like almost. <laughs> so I'm gonna apply that beige onto the inner corner from the same Artistry Vault palette. And then I'm gonna go back in with my primer and reapply to the lid because I am gonna be using a kind of like a lighter, brighter color for the lid space. So I'm gonna make sure all of that is really smooth and prepped for my lid shadow. And this peachy shade that I'm using for the lid is also from the Artistry Vault palette. I went in with like a flat shader brush to pack the color on.
Of course I had to add a liner. For some reason, purple kind of like spoke to me for my liner today. So I used a mixture of the Danessa Myricks Color Fix Cream Colors, and these are in the shades Wild Orchid and Journey. They have like a little metallic finish to them as well. So it kind of gives like the look a little bit of sparkle, but I love the way that this color like looks against like these peachy, like pink tones. I feel like it just kind of gave like the look a little bit of extra like something, but yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna go in with my Too Faced Killer Liner in shade Killer Cashmere. Um, this is a new liner kind of like collection that they came out with recently. There's like a ton of different shades that they came out along with this one, but I really like the formula of it. It's really smooth and very creamy, and it definitely lasts for a really long time on the waterline, which I absolutely love. And then I'll add my mascara. I'm using the Pat McGrath Dark Star Mascara. And for my false lashes, I'm using ones from Crystal Lashes. These are in the style Butterfly. I'm to pop those babies on using some tweezers and just make sure to like pinch them together so you can't see any skin in between them. And then finally for lips, I'm gonna start off lining them using the NYX Cosmetics Slide On Glide On Lip Liner in shade Intimidate. This is definitely one of my favorite lip liners of all time right now. And I'm also gonna use the JCAT Beauty Holy Addiction Lip Liner in shade Deep Brown. It's definitely a lot darker than my NYX one, so it's gonna give the lips a little bit of extra contour. And then to fill them in, I'm using the Fenty Beauty Stunna Lip Paint and unbutton. This is just like the perfect like peachy nude type of color. I love it. I'm obsessed. <laughs> and I'm using a brush to blend that well into the lip liner. All right guys, this is the finished look with the makeup. I actually really loved the way this look came out. I don't know why, but I've been like super nervous and kind of afraid to get into color these days, but I was like, you know what? I need to try something different today. So I was like, let me just go ahead and play with some color. And I really like the way it came out. It's still very soft, but it's still got some drama to it too. So before I end this video, I wanted to let you guys know that I'm gonna be having another giveaway. So I'm gonna put a little emoji right over here. So that way you guys can enter into the giveaway. Just make sure to add that into your comment and that'll enter you for the giveaway. I just wanted to kind of let you guys know how much I appreciate you just kind of being patient with me like while I was like, you know, away and everything. So um, I really want to do another giveaway just to, you know, show my appreciation and everything. And um, yeah, so let me show you guys the products that are going to be in this package because it's going to be quite a few. So Urban Decay Naked Wild West Palette, that's going to be included. We're also going to do a Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion. I actually haven't used this in a really long time, but this is a really good primer. I remember when I first started getting into makeup, this was like one of my go-to primers that I used before I started using like Max Paint Pot. It was all about the Urban Decay Primer Potion. We also have the BH Cosmetics Liquid Eyeliner. This is from the Lunar New Year collection. Um, so it's gonna come like that in the box. It's basically like a black um, eyeliner pen. So it's like a felt tip pen. And there is going to be the BH Cosmetics Lunar New Year palette. This baby right over here. It didn't come with like a box. It just came like with this plastic covering when I got it in the mail. Next thing is the BH Cosmetics Los Angeles 16 color eyeshadow palette. Again, this didn't come in a box, but it does have the plastic packaging here. This one's super cute. I love like the colors in this one, like those pastels at the top, Ooh, right over here, like that pink and that mint color, that might have to be like a, like a makeup look one of these days, cause that's, that's a cute combo. And then I'm gonna add the BH Cosmetics Aspen Highlighter Palette. This one's super cute. It comes with like a variety of like kind of um, colorful highlighters. I wouldn't use this on my face, but I would definitely use this on the eyes. I feel like this on the eyes would be so freaking cute, especially like this periwinkle color right over here. All of these products I got in PR, I just know that I'm not gonna use them. Like I have tons and tons of makeup and I can already tell like when I see something that I get in PR, like I kind of can kind of tell if I'm gonna use it or not. So um, things that I don't use, I just like put it away and you know, I try to give it to people, you know, whether it's like my mom or you know, just people around me and stuff. And um, yeah, so when I saw these products, I was like, they're cute, but I just know that I'm not going to use them. All of these products right here are going to come to you. So um, again, I'm going to put a little emoji right over here. So if you want to enter this giveaway, just make sure to comment down below and add this little emoji in your comments. That way I know that you're looking to um, enter into the giveaway. And also put your email address or your Instagram like at because 
I need a way to like contact you if you win the giveaway. So uh, make sure to put like one of those two things. That way I have a way to get in touch with you. But that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Definitely let me know what you guys think of the look down below in the comments. Don't forget to thumbs up this video and subscribe. And uh, am I forgetting anything? I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, <laughs> that's it. So thank you again for watching, guys. I love you, and hopefully I will see you in the next one.